Greetings, friends, crew member of our beloved, polluted, and unique spacecraft, which, since the last time we met, has taken another turn about its imaginary axis, and of course, continues creating events in full development. And you know that whenever I'm not standing up with our dear, beloved, and unique spacecraft behind me, it is because we have a guest. Our guest for today, I will not state the common place that he's very special. He will demonstrate this by himself. Vladimir Asiensa Salas, international analyst, as well as other academic areas where he has expertise. He's a member of the Institute of Study of Defense, Yaeden, and also on the links related to the armed force we've met many times. Not everyone who has active service wears a uniform, but we all work for sovereignty. So welcome. Thank you, Walter, once again for inviting me to this wonderful show. And we are going to speak about whatever topics you deem best today. Well, I don't want to open fire directly with some of the ideas that I have today. But what do you think in your hierarchy, one of the main topics of the many that you have spoken about before? The framework of the Petro in the National Geostrategy and Geopolitics developed by the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to defend themselves from the aggression of their states. Well, this is basically to speak about the background and to understand what to understand what's the background of whatever is behind the smart move of the Petro right now. It's like changing the ways of the dollar today, right? Of course, and in order to understand what's happening, we need to take a look at the history. What did the United States do before closing World War II? In 1944, in 1944, in Bretton Wood. Well, they simply put together a set of countries, many of which were regions that were under the powers of the moment, for instance, India with inland, or with the South American governments that were somehow associated to the policies of the United States. And there was a conference. Conference where there were two main figures. One of the figures was Harry White, who's the economist that represented the United States in this conference, and the other one is Professor John Minor Keynes, who was representing the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom was coming out of the World War II with a lot of problems, and the United States were the hegemony. So it was the outgoing power against the new power. So the sterling pound against the dollar, of course. And the fact that dollar was started being the main currency was due to discussion, the discussion of these two people. Harry Watt stated, that the currency after the war should have been the dollar, and John Minor Keynes thought that it should have been the Bancor, which is the currency that he proposed to create a relationship, the special rights for exchange that we have today. And in order to carry out international transactions associated to the emerging economy of that time, the new order internationally. So there was a very interesting discussion because John Minor Keynes was working with the Abaco, but the empire was not strong enough to hold this because they did not have as much gold as needed in the reserves due to all the events that took place during the war. However, the states did have the money. So Harry White urged that dollars should be the reserve and international exchange currency for the economic order, and Keynes just stated that it cannot be this type of currency, it should have some warranty. And then they started working with gold. And they mean that it did not have any backup. So it is an act of fate because I agree that this is worth something. However, the market does not always back it up. So when Keynes started with the pressure, there was an agreement with gold. So $35 for the ounces, you have stated many times your program. So the United States, as an emerging power, and Harry White as a delegate, imposed the dollar. 
El soporte que Keynes pide que with the no support that Keynes requested to have a currency that was not a fiduciary type of currency, but with gold warranties. So it was around $35 per ounce with a free exchange ever since that point until 1971. So what is the currency's importance in this moment for the framework of the expansion of the United States in the afterward? That's the most important event because through the currency, they they were able to export 50% of the merchandise of a country throughout the world and international transactions, 100% of them, had the base on the American dollar with the gold pattern. And of course, the United States, after World War II, had a great heavy industry and they were willing to export what they did not use during the war. One of the things the United States did there was based on the theories of Keynes of the British state economy. Those who were supporting the free enterprise became estheticians due to hypocrisy and because it was better for them. So they strengthened their industrial market to start building cannons and weapons and after the war they built cannons and others and they continued building appliances and cars and with the American dollar they covered the different countries of the world that were under the orbit of the United States and ever since the Cold War started and the bipolar world together with all these events that lasted until the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. But back to economics, we have the following. This is a strategy of having a strong currency with a support would allow the United States to create the Marshall Plan that granted Europe $10 billion as a loan. The Marshall Plan was a humanist plan to rebuild Europe so they could have power to buy the products that we needed to continue exporting because it was easier to export weaponry that was destroyed and needed to be reestablished. And now there's peace. So what do we have to do? Well, we need to sell appliances. We need to sell vehicles, TVs. They started building TVs, black and white TVs. And never stop with the heavy industry, which had a lot of space since the war. So the support of the currency then became the only currency that worked internationally, the only currency internationally which had an international reserve that was backed with gold. And this was very bad for the British proud because the sterling pound was no longer the main one. Yes, and there was a very important breaking point in history when the states were Richard Nixon got rid of the gold pattern due to three elements. First, they were reaching the greatest levels of expansion of capitalism in the after war and they reached the oil of non-conventional oil actually and over this they broke everything related to the support of the currency the gold pattern to expand the currencies and with this also expand the economy of the Western countries in the afterwar since 1971. These three events that took place in these times led to, of course, the dollar dropped its price because it started being a fiduciary currency and there were problems with with the rest of the nations because European currencies already were lowering their exchange rate and Charles de Gaulle and the British ministry, whose name I've forgotten, requested the United States to give them gold instead of notes. And the United States said no, and they needed to look for the international reserves in dollars and exchange this in the international market, the gold that both England and France were able to bring together in these times. So all this happened under this framework. The goal had his pride hurt after the war because he wasn't taken into consideration. And when he became the president of France, he started with his revenge one by one because the French pride was hit hardly. And de Gaulle 
had different ideas. He was an esthetician and he had the guts to do whatever he wanted to. And all this beyond the creation of currencies as the yens, which is managed by the IMF as international currency, then there was the euro. And the euro is the effort, as William Clark states, the most important effort that a group of nations have ever put together to have an alternate currency to a dollar just to some years before. And then the yuan, which was also a couple of years ago, became one of the reserve currency that was accepted by the IMF. Even though the sterling pound and other currencies, these are the ones that show the relationship of one of the economists against their behavior worldwide. This strategy means that the United States have one dollar, in this case a currency, that allow them to carry out their geoeconomic interests worldwide, to import raw materials, import raw materials for the industry, and then exporting everything, literally everything. And in 1971, there was a phenomenon that's well known where before derogating the gold pattern, Richard Nixon sent Kissinger to speak with the Saudi Arabian leader for Saudi Arabia to keep the oil negotiations based on the American dollar, because if not, it would not have any support. And when he was asked about this. He said, well, you have to work with the consequences. So this was the support of dollar after 1971 as the main international currency. And this currency became the main event for this. And when you read Keynes' theories, you can read that in chapter 21 of his book, he speaks about the importance of the currency in world demand. And the global demand is the core of his theory. And for this, for the United States, it is very important to have the currency as a method to keep their financial, economic empire around the world. They start with their own currency, the one that they control, and they can overthrow governments with this. They did with Saddam Hussein, and then they did so with al Gaddafi. And Saddam Hussein said that he was going to sell his oil in Euro after breaking the alliances with the United States and Mohammed al Gaddafi who worked with the dinar gold to all the African countries and then the relationship with the European countries and the states and any country of the world. So this cost their life. Gaddafi had the best training in the best academies of Europe, but he was a nationalist. I had the chance to meet both of them and I had the chance to interview them. I interviewed Saddam Hussein. I had dinner with Gaddafi in his palace. I was sitting down in the carpet with Quesada, the Cuban diplomat, and the life standard of Iraq and Libya were really, really good when our dollar, for instance, was 430. So no one was against the government. How were they overthrown? Well, there is a sinister act behind this. Yes, it was very sinister. It's part of the expansion of the West to try and erase a group of stakeholders that were internationally to keep control over the whole country, over the whole planet. And back to our case, without a doubt, there's a relationship, a direct relationship, as stated by Keynes, between the currency and the economy, the currency and the rest of the economy. So they start from a view where they control a currency internationally or they exercise each nation or power exercise their economy based on strengthening a given currency. And this, this action itself is the one that attempts and their very harsh conditions as attempted by the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela with petrol. And we are going to speak about this. Venezuela 
as we all know, is the country with the greatest heavy and extra heavy reserves of fuel in the planet, as well as reserves of other minerals, as vanadium and many others as part of the reserves, with great conditions of gas, Venezuela is under the framework of the fourth or fifth natural gas reserves worldwide. And above all, we have 17 of the 19 strategic minerals in the Guayana area. So a nation with features as ours justifies what Commander Chavez stated were a country. He said that in the Orinoco Strip needed to have an armed force that would be able to defend the interest of a country with so much wealth in minerals. So Venezuela since 2015, even though we can speak about this ever since the start of the military revolution, facing a group of attacks. It would take all the show to analyze them one by one, but particularly in 2015, there were three factors that were very important. They are very important to keep into consideration. First, Obama, on 2015, who said that Venezuela is a threat for the interest and the foreign policy of the United States. Then, on August 24, 2017, where Donald Trump created a fence, a financial fence around Venezuela based on the perspective of the institutions that work with the dollar internationally, with the reserves of the World Bank, the IMF, everything related to the sphere of the dollar. And over this, recently, on March 19 this year, there was another decree blocking natural and juridical individuals of the states to make business with Venezuela based on the framework of the use of the petro, which is the currency that Venezuela is now standing for. So what's the idea behind the petro? To get rid of the fence of the wall that Venezuela is facing from the states, or already doing so explicitly, not as it happened in the times of George Bush, where they came as if they weren't doing anything, but they were behind the coup of April, the strike of the oil, and everything related to this. But now, it is clear, and one of the things that Donald Trump is doing ever since the Obama decree, starting with the Obama decree, is opening all the artillery against Venezuela to make Venezuela a failed state, and for them, after creating a failed state together with the people that travel the world and creating sanctions over Venezuela and creating a government of puppets that will allow to govern the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela by saying that they have gotten rid of the state nation with the interest of Washington after it has been stated that one of the doctrines that Washington has never kept aside and has always kept on using is the Monroe Doctrine, which should be called the Adams Doctrine, in my opinion. But this doctrine, America for the Americans, the elites of the United States, but they forget that we are all Americans from Canada to the Patagonia. They want to get to appropriate everything. The world will be United States citizens. That's it. The campaign slogan of Donald Trump, where he says, make America great again. So making United States great again. And they use the word America. And I will not speak about the many anecdotes that I've have when visiting the states. Some of them have led to the exchange of things that we cannot speak at this time, but we've all been through to this. We are all Americans. Those who come from Canada and until the Falklands, we are all Americans. Once uh, I heard the lady saying, well, I'm American, and I told her, well, I'm American too. I come from South America. And after I showed her a map of the whole continent as the one you have behind you, she said, really? And I told her, yes, really, indeed. They don't know about geography. This is one of the problems. But back to the core topic. The focus point is that with all the attacks carried out by Donald Trump recently, and even before him, President Obama, the United States 
want to do what I said before, transform the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela into a failed state, and with the idea of appropriating of all our natural resources and at the same time hitting the Bolivarian doctrine that after 200 years has been against the Monroe doctrine. And now this leads us to this. The Petro is a very important move because we are over the financial fence because the decree of Trump, this is destined to American citizens and to companies and individuals. Why? Well, because they cannot create a decree beyond their territory, because this would be ridiculous, but for the Petro, as it's a cryptocurrency, they do not have control over the transactions that could be done with a cryptocurrency. And they cannot do this with any cryptocurrency in the world, with Ethereum, with Bitcoin, nor any other of the cryptocurrencies that we could speak about today. So this is created with uh, the Quit, where the Petro is forbidden, but it is very difficult to move this forward because the launching of the Petro has two smart, very smart reasons behind it. First, getting rid of the financial fence of the states, and they have increased this ever since 2015, and secondly, creating a currency, an international currency, a crypto asset, as it has been stated or called, with which any person or business who wants to buy any export products of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela can do so based on this asset, just like Venezuela can buy in different parts of the world the products that are needed because we have not been able to produce them in this country as of now. And this is what we need to say. Venezuela needs to evolve towards a productive and diversified economy and not only tackle oil, even though we have a lot of oil. We have all the minerals and all the necessary elements to do so, as well as the human talent that has been developed through thousands, thousands of scholarships for specialization. And Walter, what you just mentioned is very important because we need to understand that this is a competitive advance, advantage as well as a competitive advantage of Venezuela against the world. Because if we're able to industrialize these minerals, these raw materials, then we will have the capacity of experts that would benefit everyone in Venezuela and would allow to comply with the third objective of the nation's plan, which is creating of Venezuela and economic power. And this is, of course, crucial for the framework of the first objective, which is the national independence of Venezuela, sustaining the national independence. What do you think of the Colombia plan? Well, Plan Colombia was meant to hit the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela because as Colombia is a country with all the characteristics of a failed state for so low as well as the main producer of drugs in the world and of course a strategic ally of the greatest consumer of drugs in the world with each United States and if you just got it millions of people in that country will become crazy. And there's a detail about this. Today, the currency in the market of drugs is the American dollar. So the factor that oil had many years ago to withstand the dollar, the dollar is today the main currency for transactions related to drugs as it has been seen in different international reports, amongst them reports of the United Nations that I have had the access to, the so-called drug dollar. So here we have this event as well. So Venezuela, without a doubt, is creating an autonomous currency, an economic mechanism for relating with countries abroad. And it is born in a very important moment, a moment when the People's Republic of China have created the gold yuan, and the gold yuan is only for future gold transactions when China is the greatest importer of oil today. 
la, los países por importaciones, if we take a look of the imports first there's China and the New States but this is going to change in some years due to the decline the second wave of oil in the United States is just around the corner and we will see this in the next decade when do you think this will happen 2019 2020 the decline will start so they will try to find oil elsewhere yes of course so this method that allows them to feel strong today because they have a certain production of oil that have reduced their imports will decline shortly and this is directly related to the strikes against Venezuela which has the greatest reserves of oil in the world both heavy and extra heavy and it's only four or five days away of sailing when the ones of the Persian Gulf that also pays the United States is 45 days away and we contrast them with Canada and with the Kisanasi of course pollution due to the exploitation of Alberta, Canada and the pipelines in the United States this is way above the amounts that can be generated in Venezuela with the exports that we've had for over a century from Venezuela to the United States and this is under the new system of fractioning of the so-called fracking to get rare oil and the different soils are not only part of fracking but they are also pollute they also pollute the water and one percent of the fracking mechanisms are radioactive components that poison waters but also poison the soil and can directly have a hit on the agricultural production at a surface level and then there's genetic mutations and then alteration of the chromosomes because there's radiation levels that we were not thinking and it is in the food in the water in the air so all of this is part of the idea that the attack of Venezuela is due to all these reasons, the reasons that I have stated. And it's a very interesting action from Venezuela to be able to have a currency. And once again, I'm speaking about Keynes, because Keynes speaks in his theory in chapter 21 of the book he wrote with his theory that it states that many economists are always thinking that the creation of the price is related to the supply and demand but there's few economists that have gone beyond this space that have studied in depth understand that the framework of the currency is needed for the prices and the control of markets this crucial element is the one that somehow underlies within the actions taken by President Nicolás Maduro today in the Venezuelan state, trying to create a currency that would allow to create a relationship of Venezuela with the rest of the world, both from the perspective of exports as with imports, without the need of using American dollars. And as I said, the American dollar with the exchanges of China and Russia and with all the situation that's taking place today internationally is a currency that is declining and the fact that the congressman Paul said last year that the health of economy was measured by the health of its currency and that the federal reserves had issued in 2008 and until today around 4 billion in organic dollars in organic dollars means that they don't have any support of gold or any other kind no support in the economy it's beyond the price of the ounce with no support because the economy of the United States was supposedly according to Nixon was going to withhold the American dollar and if the economy of the United States the one with the greatest debt in the world that has an over 
creation of currency, which is, of course, counterproductive to the management of the merchandise where you should use your own currency as the merchandise for exchange. This should, of course, have control. They should have control over this, and they don't have this. So this is how the decline of the dollar starts again in the world. This stays in Venezuela. The presentations of the opposition that have stated the possibility of dollarizing the economy. And this for us would be, of course, a step back from every point of view, because this would grant the United States, we would be given the United States our sovereignty, our monetary sovereignty. And beyond this, we would be at the hands of the IMF for any credit actions that Venezuela could develop for their economic growth. And this is fully counterproductive. And because I can understand, I can understand this six decades ago, a nation emerging from World War II, the only one who wasn't bombed in its continental territory that developed an immense economy, but not an economy that has been struck where the president of the United States is speaking about making America great again. So making of the United States what they were before, because they're no longer that. And this slogan, of course, speaks about them not being what they were. So they have to become once again what they used to be. And you're being very subtle when it's saying that it was not bombed in their territory, regardless of the Japanese with the bombs. And it was bombed in Pearl Harbor, but the strategist of the Navy of the United States said, listen, the Japanese can reach Pearl Harbor. And when they attacked Pearl Harbor, and they were speaking about treason, the aircraft carriers were not there. There wasn't a single aircraft carrier in the port. Well, maybe they knew about the keys, the passwords in Japan, and they were able to allow them to hit first in order to react with the fever, with the hatred due to the attack. And the strategists had stated this was possible. And then, there was another economic hit in the afterwar by imposing their currency worldwide. So what Venezuela needs to do today, and now we're going to speak about technical elements of the petro. Venezuela today is fighting a big, big war. The Freedom to Plan, Plan Freedom to Develop by the United States, by the South Command of the United States, against Venezuela, as well as the three decrees, the two that came from Obama and the one from Donald Trump, are to put Venezuela against a rock and a hard place in order to overthrow Nicolás Maduro, president, and get rid of the constitution of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. And of course, derogating this and imposing the dollar in Venezuela, dollarizing the economy, and allow Venezuela to be under the command of Washington. And for this, there is a strategic need for them to have control over America and particularly over Venezuela so that they can breed after the growth of the People's Republic of China. That's a growth that cannot be stopped today. And even from a military point of view, after the mistakes, to say the least, that have been made in the Middle East by the Americans, where they have attempted to once again apply on Russia the operation that was applied during the Cold War, they have not been able to do so. The emerging power of Russia after the Cold War and during the last two or three years, Russia has demonstrated what Putin said. We're going to have two or three bad years, but after that we're going to grow. And this has happened, and that's why Putin has been re-elected, and this shows the the number of votes he got and the credibility. 
And this is very, very different to other times. And listen, Walter, here, this lead us to understand the decision of the Petro. What's the Petro? Petro is a cryptocurrency, a crypto asset. But to understand what a currency is and what are the functions it has in order to be academic as you are always urging us to be. Currencies have three main functions. First, is a means for exchange. Carlos Mack, Charles Mark said that this was a method for exchange. Karl Marx said that it was universal method where you were able to exchange different means and measure this due to the possibilities of the third merchandise and in this case is a currency. Secondly, it has a deposit of value. And here we're going to keep in mind a very important detail. Whenever you have some savings, either internationally or within your nation, the savings that you may have with international reserves or you may have assets to strengthen your international strength, you do so based on a given currency and based on a group of mechanisms that have been created to strengthen the value of the currency. And one of the things that have hurt us with the dollar today and with the Cucuta dollar and one of the things that have been created from Venezuela to Colombia to hit, to extract the capacity of Bolívar Fuerte, which has many implications behind it that we were going to speak about shortly, is hit the strike the Venezuelan currency due to this capacity of value. So no one in Venezuela today can save their money in Bolívars because inflation is beyond the value and this is to produce the problems that we have been through in Venezuela in the recent times with the help of international factors. So this value is denied to our currency today. However, the Petro does have the possibility of depositing value because it is supported with oil. It will be supported also with gold, with the strategic minerals, with diamonds also with biodiversity. So it has a support, it has a foundation, and thus it is a different currency than the rest of the international ones. I have to say something. When I was a kid in Uruguay, we used to play with notes, with bills. Some friends had some pharmacists and we were playing with these educational board games, those games that today are teaching us how to make business. And we played with notes of 10,000 marks. And what happened? Well, it was the inflation that destroyed Germany, 10,000 marks. Just imagine, when I had to carry out the maneuver in Germany in the Cold War with the army, with 10,000 marks, I could have bought a tank. And there is a very interesting case in Germany in the last century where the wives of the workers of factories would come at the eve to get the payment because if they waited to the afternoon, they were not going to be able to afford the food that they were going to buy later on. But this is a very interesting story. We should speak about this as a lecture one day with all these topics. But coming back to our currency, another of the things that have been part of this operation against Venezuela is one of the properties that a currency should have is being a unit of account. A unit of account is something where you can measure the GDP, where you can keep your accountings. The, the GDP and the gross return of product as well. So this is everything that measures the goods produced in a territory and outside of a territory during a year. Well, in those years, we are watched by everyone, all the different categories, and we have to teach, yes, because we want to speak to all our people and go beyond our borders. So the unit of account 
For instance, I can work in a company and I can understand how much they're produced in a year and what were their financial statements at the end of a year. But with our inflation, having a unit of account for any company, either big, small, national, international, it's of course difficult. And as a joke today, our merchandise, our means for exchange for small transactions Transactions of food and others in national currency, while the rest of the deposit of value on the unit of account are being done with currencies that have nothing to do with our country and they are not part of the interest of our country. Beyond this, the Bolivar in Venezuela does not only represent our national constitutional currency that has been defined on Article 318 of the Bolivarian Constitution, but also it means all the protection that the name of the liberator has and currently this is all reflected with the Venezuelan nationality and hitting the Bolivar means striking Venezuela and of course going against the remembrance of the liberator with the Venezuelans. This part of the operation has been carried out here in Venezuela. So in order to retrieve the Bolivar, one of the elements that are being used as many other measures is the creation of a cryptocurrency, a cryptocurrency that's not at the reach of the states for it to be struck. Secondly, this should mean a piece of technology today of the emerging economies, the most trustworthy one that will allow us to interact with other actors in the world without being part of the dollar. Coming back to the dollar, coming back to the dollar sphere is the worst that could ever happen to Venezuela because it's a declining currency and because we will lose all our sovereignty, our monetary sovereignty that it is that is required by a nation as ours. You're speaking about a declining currency. Speak about dollar. Yes, the dollar is declining. We all know the frustrations that have been shown in the different indexes, NASDAQ and others. Internationally, this shows the weakness of the dollar against the international moment. For this year, China and Russia are already exchanging their products without the use of the American dollar. And this is a great hit against America. And there's been certain agreements with other nations, for instance with the case of Turkey and Russia, by using both the Turkish and Russian currencies. And Turkey is the eastern angle of NATO. I wanted to listen to this because we always speak about this and this is a very important event. And I have said this ad nauseum. When I was there, things were very different and something is changing, right? Of course, the United States losing power, not only from the point of view of their influence globally, but also the influence of their institutions based on the dollar, the dollar that led to the destruction of different nations to ensure their safety is maybe not reaching its end, but it's declining. And it's a stage of decline that doesn't seem to become stronger in the future, but it will become weakened. And Russia and China are now becoming great friends, and this is a great hit to the United States. And China, with the production capacity they have today that the United States don't have now, is the reason why the United States want to take control over Latin America in order to have the raw materials that will later on allow them to sustain their internal demand and also to exchange with the nations that are still their allies economically. This is the bottom line. Let me say something. Decades ago, the Association of Students of China told me, we want to invite you to see what we are doing. But if you could pay your own ticket, this would be the best. We will pay for the rest. And I told them, well, yeah, of course. It's easier today because the exchange was 430. And I remember the square and the avenue of eternal peace, which is the widest avenue of the world. And then the forbidden city that I was allowed to enter. But I remember 
that at the exact time in the morning, and I had the chance to prove this every day, there was a sea of bicycles, absolute silence, no contamination, and a tsunami of bicycles going there. And then at 5 p.m., another tsunami of bicycles coming the other way because they're coming back to work. And I visited the great companies and also the smaller companies, and you could see the citizens that were thinking about faith and future. 15, 20 minutes to rest at noon, and then a bowl of rice in the workplace, and then continue working, continue working to continue with the development of their country. They haven't said a man in the mood yet because they just don't want to. And this is not far away. They will do it when they want to. But the space station that just fell due to the end of its half-life, I have the diagram of the space station, and I had the chance to see it. I have seen it in your office. And back to the Petro. It is important to understand that Venezuelan economy, if it wants to expand, if we want to transform the competitive and competitive advantage that we have with the different minerals, with the mineral wealth that we have in Venezuela for a productive economy, an economy that will produce enough food, enough medicine, footwear, houses, clothes, everything that Venezuelans need and with the capacity of exporting the future, not only raw materials but finished products, added value, added value for different areas and well we need to start by having a strong currency and this a strong currency, in this case we speak about the cryptocurrency, is going this way. The other thing that should be taken in consideration is that the cryptocurrency together with the measures that will heroically be taken starting June 4, about the reconversion of the currency, so a new set of measures behind this, and then the petrol is a fundamental part in order to strengthen these actions, and these actions in regards to our currency will allow us to, little by little, retrieve the capacity, in this case, of President Nicolás Maduro, who has called this the sovereign believer, Bolívar Soberano, and of course, of course, the strategy of the Petro, a strategy will in the future will not only become a cryptocurrency, but also a cryptocurrency so that Venezuela can sovereignly exchange with different nations around the world. A currency that will, of course, be part of the map. As today, we have the golden yuan, which is growing in the stock of Shanghai for oil negotiations, or the Russians who have developed their own currency for selling oil and other exports and will also get their own national cryptocurrencies. And we don't know if they're going to have any type of support, but they're about to release them. The idea of the Valerian Republic of Venezuela has been contagious, right? It's not only contagious. And here I have some comments of Max Kaiser. Max Kaiser is one of the most enthusiastic people internationally who's eager about this Petro event. So he said that the Petro cryptocurrency can solve the problems of Venezuela and still creating the foundations of a great recovery as long as it is designed and managed correctly. So this is one of the things stated by Max Geiser. And there's another quote that I would like to mention today. It's important to listen to this and listen to one of the things that He's saying, if the cryptocurrency Petro works in Venezuela, the United States will no longer be able to apply sanctions to any other nations as they have done for many years, especially with nations that don't answer to their imperial desires. So these are very important statements, and Venezuela, of course, of course, listen, we haven't spoken about all the elements, all the technical elements, everything related to security and whatnot, because it's a very difficult topic. We have shown a geoeconomic and geostrategic approach about what the Petro is, and also we have defended the Petro from the perspective of national sovereignty, the economic sovereignty, the monetary sovereignty, and the financial sovereignty of our country against the greatest resources in Venezuela.
in minerals today to transform this in development because we don't want to live off the profit of these minerals as we did with oil in the 20th century. But to transform them into comparative and competitive advantages will allow us to develop an industry that first will satisfy the internal market and then that will provide capacities for the export of items of value and avoid the dependency we've always had. And there is a very important detail that calls the attention of Kaiser. He said the problems of Venezuela are caused mainly due to the American empire. And this, this news has been, of course, said before. The idea of the cryptocurrency is a great way of starting breaking this colonial chain. And this is said by one of the most important economists around the world. Abiding sanctions is breaking the chain of the colony, and if the, avoiding this sanction is a simple method, and creating the first sovereign currency is also simple, according to him. Venezuela can become part of the fight to stop the power of the dollar. So there is an international joint venture to get rid of the dollar for international transactions in Venezuela today. Assumes that it will become dollarized, then they would be almost performing a haki to use a Japanese expression. Those who lost Second World War but now have a better economy than the Americans. And beyond their debt, they've been able to develop relationships with Russia and even with China. So they have somehow having a unique influence of the United States. So based on this, we can think today that due to strategic reasons, there is a need to boost to foster the petro and later on creating a process for the retrieval of the Bolivar as the national currency. There is another group of methods that we could speak about in other times. I would be more than happy to do so. It is very important to say that in TV, time is our greatest enemy. Listen, here we work with times, with the spaces, and this has been a very clear message. What's your idea to conclude with this presentation? We need to continue with the strategy of the Petro. And in the future, we need to recover the Bolivar as the national currency. So as the president said, this is one of the objectives he has. And this is part of the thing that we've been writing about and also speak about in different scenarios nationally because this is a need. Where can we read your information? I have a blog called 180 grados y se 180 degrees ICQ. This is one of the means and then my participations. ICQ. ICQ. The other one are my participations. Well, I would like to thank the invitations that I constantly have from different media as the one that you work with to show my ideas, ideas that have allowed us to little by little create different events that have actually taken place in the country. And this is the idea, make this possible by developing the national economy, being autonomous with our currencies, and fostering the petro and retrieving the value of the believer because this is needed to ensure the economic sovereignty of Venezuela. And of course, be against the traders that come from Santander. Yes, that's something we could speak during a whole show. We need a special show just for this because we need to analyze all what the strike of Venezuela has against Venezuela for the operation we have with our national currency. Well, so that's a future commitment. We hope the near future. And whatever you may be on the other side of the monitor, thank you, Professor Vladimir Adianza, Professor, Doctor, others. After this, you'll be called Vladimir. I hope so. I hope so. I, I like my name, Vladimir. My name is Vladimir. I was named like this by my father 
My name is Walter Nelson, but in the Falklands, I was in the Argentinian side, even though I was invited by the Crown of Britain to the Falklands. But your heart's not there. Well, I will not say where my heart is, but it is in Venezuela, however. Thank you very much for allowing us to be there with you. And we will be back in the next dossier. And as you can see, this is always necessary. So, from Studio 3 of Venezuela Television, don't send messages to Telesur. This is not a Telesur program. This comes from myself as an independent producer, and it is broadcasted from Venezuela Television. Director, the floor is all yours.